Hello everyone. This is Ashrit from Learn Digital Academy. So till now uh, we discussed on a uh, lot more designing softwares and all, right? So like Photoshop, Illustrator and all. So in this session uh, we'll discuss on 3D part. So what is 3D? So 3D architectural use. So how to do uh, interior and exterior design with the help of 3D? How to place a plan inside a 3D and all we'll discuss. So fine. So now you can see a beautiful interface of a 3D software. So uh, currently I'm using the 3ds Max. So 3ds Max is the software where we are using uh, to create architectural design. Okay. So this is a complete interface of 3ds Max. So S stands for Studio, Three Dimensional Studio Max, and this is a software from the company called AutoDesk. Okay. So the top. Yeah, uh, is our menu things. The right hand side is our basic C sheets, cameras, uh, parameters, uh, primitives, and all you will get in the right hand side. So then the second line is over here the selection objects, the parenting objects, the rendering objects, and the render settings. So then again in the left hand side you can see a display over here. So this display indicates uh, whatever images you are using or whatever shapes you are using. It will show you everything uh, one by one over here. And this four view is our working area. So as it is a 3D, yes, so it's a three dimensional uh, viewport. So we have a three different views. So this is a top here. You can identify it's a top. You can change any port to any port. Just click on top. If you don't want top, select to bottom. If you don't want front, so you can change it to uh, left, right, uh, anything is fine. Top view, this will be front view and this is your left view. So the thing which view you will click the view is highlighted with the light yellow shade or orange shade. You can observe the border over here. That means that is your active port. So active view port. And the last one is your perspective. So perspective is uh, your maximum working area. So because perspective, in perspective you can rotate the things, you can check uh, whether you aligned your shapes properly or not. So most of the cases perspective will give you a proper uh, output in a three dimensional view. Okay. So if you want to place anything in a proper uh, view puts, so make sure you need to place in a front view, top view, left view. So in these three views, if the position is proper. So by default, automatically perspective view looks clear. So make sure before checking in the perspective view, check in all other viewports. So then only uh, it will give you a proper output for your 3D shapes. So before starting, a uh, few shortcuts you need to uh, mention. Uh, you need to remember all the time. So here also universal undo uh, is control Z. So edit. So control Z is there. So that is undo. You can observe. So if you want to maximize and minimize the viewports, so here you can observe very small viewports are there. So I want to enlarge this. So press Alt W in keyboard. Alt W means maximizing and minimizing your view area. So Alt W. So select front, click Alt W, maximize, minimize any view. The selected viewport uh, will be maximized by pressing Alt W. If you want to minimize, Alt W. Okay. So then once you're done with your work, if you want to save the work in the left top, we have a file option, click on file. So here, if you want to create a new scene, we have a new all. So reset, uh, it will reset your all current reset settings and all and it will take you to the default mode. So open, if you saved any of your previous works, you can open with the help of this open button. So open recent, it will show you your recent items, uh, whatever things. Uh, when you created, uh, in which folder you saved, so what kind of folder name you have given and it is in which format it will uh, showcase you. So then save, uh, save for your 3ds max format. So if you save anything, uh, it will be in dot, uh, 3ds, uh, dot, uh, 3ds format or 3ds max. So click on save, uh, it will give you a new pop-up window here you can observe 3ds max. So that indicates a max format dot max. So you can save to your older versions also like 16, 17, 18 or any other characters if you have you can save it for character versions also. So 
so by default it will be in uh, current version i am using 2019 so by default it will save in uh, version 2019 if you want to save this file in older version so after saving in a higher version if you want to open this file in a lower version make sure which version you want to open so 16 17 18 so max to max you can go uh, three version uh, back so more than that you can't able to create if you need to go back again and again so save it for 2016 so then open the same file in 2016 there you have an option again you can change it to three more version back like 15 14 13 12 and all like that you can use this so this is the option uh, where you need to save all your 3d works okay so then uh, the left hand side is also our rendering settings the right hand side i indicate uh, i mentioned you uh, basic shapes basic parameters and primitives everything you will get on screen only so in the bottom one is your timeline so timeline once uh, whenever we are working with animations and all we need to use a time line okay so uh, 3d is a huge software so in the beginning stage uh, it will take a lot of time to uh, get the interface only so make sure so just open the software switch the software so try to explore inside the software so like left hand side what you have right hand side what you have top side what you have and all so then so just ma minimize and maximize the viewport areas so by pressing alt w so like this so alt w you can observe alt w so then if you want to zoom in and zoom out so just scroll so scroll in your mouse you can scroll you can observe this one we call it as a base the grids so scroll down so it will zoom out and zoom in so if you want to rotate the viewport so in the right hand side you have one cube you can observe a cube so just click and rotate it you can observe you can rotate so exactly if you want to please any of your object in a front view means so here uh, you have an option so front so just click on front exactly it will give you a front viewport so you can use this to rotate uh, your axis or your viewport so use this see it's a top view so here it indicates now we are in a top view so you can rotate click and rotate now you are in right view so if anything goes wrong if you can't able to find the grid so in the right corner above the view cube so here you have a one small box so this box a home button so just click on that so your grids will appear exactly in front of the screen so if you're pressing this also if you can't able to find the grid press g in your keyboard so press g in your keyboard so g stands for grids okay so these are the major basic things you need to remember so scroll zoom in zoom out uh, this box you can rotate viewport or you can use alt and middle mouse uh, to uh, rotate the viewport here you can observe so to pan from one direction to another direction use only middle mouse so click on middle mouse button or scroll button and then you can move from one place to another place you can observe i am moving the viewport so viewport grid i am moving so viewport i am rotating viewport i am zooming in and zooming out so to maximize and minimize alt w so this all the basic standard uh, shortcuts you need to remember so this all how we will complete interface with uh, 3ds max i hope the session was informative we'll catch up in next session hello everyone this is ashrit from learn digital academy so last class we discussed on uh, interface of 3d right yes so in this class we'll discuss on a uh, basic shapes in 3d so what all the major basic shapes we required uh, where you will find a basic shapes how to draw basic shapes how to move uh, rescale and rotate a shapes what all the properties you will get for basic shapes and all will discuss so in the right hand side uh, you can observe a uh, standard primitives so under that uh, object types are there so here you can observe a lot more uh, 3d objects over here box sphere cylinder torus teapot plane pyramid tube a geosphere a cone and also text plus so if you want to draw a box how to draw a box so initially uh maximize the viewport so click on box 
So just uh, mouse click, click and drag your mouse and release the mouse button and move the mouse upside or downside. So you will get a thickness over here. So then to end the height or width or the thickness, just again click it. So you can observe a three dimensional box over here. If you want to select a box, so in the top you have an option called select and move and the shortcut is W. So now you can observe Y axis, it will move in the Y direction, Z axis, it will move in the Z direction, X axis, it will move in the X direction. So to rotate your viewport, middle mouse button and alt. So now you can observe your product or your sheep in three dimensional. You can easily able to identify uh, top, bottom, front, back, left and side. Okay. So, so if you want to move, uh, you can click on this uh, green color, blue color, red color and you can move in your own axis. If you want to rescale, here you have an option of rescale, select and uniform rescale. The shortcut is R. So from the middle, so if you move your cursor to the middle, the middle you can observe a yellow triangle. Click and drag upside or downside or left side or right side, anything is fine. Just you need to click and move. So you can observe a uniform scaling. So uniform means height and width, everything in a uniform direction or uniform axis. So if you want to move individual axis, I want to increase the Y means click on Y and drag it. So if you want Z, click and drag on Z. So if you want X, click and drag on X. So it's up to you, up to your requirement, whatever type of rescaling you need, uh, you can do that. So then the next one is if you want to rotate your object, here you have an option. So select and rotate. The shortcut is E. So yellow, you can observe it is rotating in Z direction. So if you click there, it will show you uh, first is X, Y, Z. In the bottom also, you can observe X, Y, Z. So currently I rotated Z axis. So red means you can observe currently I'm rotating X axis. So one of the means blue. So up to your requirement. So you can rotate your shapes or you can rotate your objects. So whatever changes you are doing, whatever things you are placing or moving or rescaling. So everything you can able to identify in all other view also. So here you can observe. So rescale, you can observe in top and left. So that is I am rescaling the side axis. So then if you rescale this, you can observe in top and front. I am rescaling the front axis. So now increase. Yes, you can observe. I am rescaling the height or width or depth, anything. It will show you in any other two view ports. So this will remain same for all shapes. If you want to rescale, you need to use this. If you want to smooth, you need to use the same tool or same option. So let's delete. So if you need an exact measurement of a box, so in the right hand side only you have an option length, width, height, how much you need, type it. For example, I need 10 by 10 by 10. Everything I need a 10. So just click or after drawing also, you can change the measurement. I need 5, 5, 5. So you can observe. You will get everything in uniform depends on your requirement. So then the next one is sphere, just click and drag, so you can observe the sphere. So radius, here you have an option, you can increase and decrease the radius. So for all the objects, you have these parameters. So then cone, yes, click, drag and move your mouse. So outer movement, uh, it will increase the top portion, inside movement, it will decrease the top portion. Cone means one end should be sharp, so now you can observe it is in a sharp. So then cylinder, click, drag, release your mouse button, move your mouse up, then click. So here you can observe the cylinder. So then uh, tube, so first click and drag, you will get a radius. So then release the mouse button. So move your mouse, so then again click. So now I got a radius, but I need a thickness or height. So now move your mouse up, click. So two steps for some shapes. Three steps for some steps uh, or some objects you need to identify. So Taurus, 
So click and drag and up. So step one, click and drag, release the mouse button. Step two, move your mouse up. So this height is enough. Step three, end it by clicking your mouse. So this is your pyramid. So then a plane. Yes. So these are all the major shapes we required. So whenever we are working with any designing. So one is plane, one is torus, one is pyramid, other is cylinder, tube, cone and sphere. So each and individual things you can observe whatever things I am placing in all the viewports you can able to observe all the things. See all. So one, two, three viewports. So if you select here, it will display in front view also, it will display in top view also, it will display in side view also. So that is the plus point of 3D. You can able to view all three directions or all three uh, view port. Okay. So fine. So except this, we have few more uh, basic shapes. So where you will find a few more basic shapes. So let's select and delete this. So way means in the right hand side of this tool. So this one we call it as a geometry. Exactly right hand side we have an option called splines. So click. So here also you have a line, a rectangle, circle, ellipse. So but here to give a thickness you need to add some particular properties for this. What are that? For example, rectangle draw. So now you can observe there is no thickness at all. So only outer line is there. If you want to give a thickness, so what you need to do in the top, we have a modifier option. So here you have a modify option, click and in under modify list type EX. So EX stands for extrude. So we need to give a thickness, apply extrude. So if you give a extrude, it will fill with some color. So that is we are giving a thickness now. So in the bottom amount is there. So how much amount you need? So you need to give. So depends on your requirement, you need to give. Okay. So why I'm showing this? So the plus point is if you need only fill object, you can give a extrude. If you need only outer line, so like border, so just draw a rectangle. So here you have an option called rendering. So open rendering. So you need to turn on two things. So one is enable in rendering, other is enable in viewport. Now you can observe only outline like a frame. So two things are there. One is radial frame. So radial means a round curvatures, a roundness in the corners. So rectangle means you will get a hard block. So this will uh, remain same for all things. If you are using circle, you will get the same thing. See, if you are using the ellipse, you will get the same thing. So maybe you can interchange for radial or rectangle, anything is fine. If you want to give a thickness, so go for modify list, apply EX. So extrude, see, extrude value you will get. So make sure you need to work on both these things. These two things are important for architectural designs. So we are working everything with the help of one is geometry and one is shapes. We call it as shapes, basic shapes. So let's delete. If you want to take a copy of a similar object, how to take a copy? Select your shape, hold down shift button and click and drag which direction you need and release the mouse button first and then release the shift on the keyboard. Copy. Yes. So number of copies. So one means one. 5 means 5, 10 means 10, apply and give a OK, you can observe a multiple copies. So very simple, so select, so left side means move left side, right side means move right, top means hold shift and drag it up, so copy, yes, I need 3 copies, apply 3 and give OK, you can observe 1, 2, 3, see, so otherwise you can go for edit. So under edit also you have uh, options uh, to duplicate or to undo and all. So you can uh, do that. So very simple thing. So make sure uh, you need to play with the shortcuts. So in edit where you will get. So edit. So we have an option called array. Okay. 
okay uh, this is a new version uh, it is inside a tool uh, tool menu bar here you have a option called array click on array so it will show you the preview which direction you need and number of copies i need a three copies in the direction of uh, z so increase the z move move rotate scale move i need so turn on the preview you will get a preview option so give a value like two so now you can observe it is copying so just you need to move the z axis you will get a copy so counts i have given three if you increase it will keep on copying so that is array so depends on your requirement you need to plan for that and you need to use this so these all the basic shapes and most important shapes you guys need to remember for architectural and design so make sure to practice this shapes so try to draw all the shapes so if it is a normal geometry you will get a thickness if you are working with the shapes make sure you need to go for modifier and you need to apply extrude option hope the session was informative we'll catch up in the next session hello everyone this is ashrit from land digital academy so last few classes we discussed on a basic shapes how to use the shapes uh, how to play with the interface what all the major shortcuts you need to use everything we discussed so in this session we'll discuss on uh, how to place a plan so the plan a 2d plan or a 2d draft which you have created with the help of uh, autocad software or any other software how to place or how to import that plan inside your 3d view so uh, let's follow the steps uh, we have a options called uh, file so under file uh, you need to go for import option so here we have a different different options so link is there uh, replace is there merge is there import is there so just click on import so wherever you have a plan just find the local drive or where you saved your plan so there uh, you have a cad file so a cad file here you can observe i have one sample of the cad file so uh, just click on that and please open so once you opened it autocad dwg dxf import options you will get so here you can change the measurement unit for example so a few people used to create the plan uh, in millimeters in centimeters in feet in meters and all so maybe for example if you created uh, that in feet so if you want to convert that feet into millimeter so here you have a unit setups you can directly use that where so here you can observe rescale option is this so that is incoming file units so click on rescale so inches is this so whichever measurement you need you prefer you need to change it so for example maybe you created in centimeter centimeter you need to convert that to feet means you can give a feet so if you want to uh, keep as it is so example you created in a feet in autocad so here also you need to work with the feet means leave as it is don't click a rescale option so i created a plan with the measurement unit of feet and inches so that's why i don't want to do any changes what i will do so just i will import that as a default so then click okay so once you click okay it will take some time and it will load uh, in the top view you can observe the perfect plan so select or click on the top view press alt w maximize it so here you can see the complete plan of your elevation that is complete plan for your uh, interior or exterior or commercial building or residential whatever it may be you can observe just scroll in i will showcase you what all what okay so this is the entrance gate and this is the road so once you entered so this is the lobby uh, that is parking area and all so the door is over here so entry so this will be the door uh, the master bedroom or a bedroom uh, with attached bathroom a small bedroom with attached bathroom a living area a uh, utility or a puja room you can uh, use for whatever uh, depends on your plan or depends on your architect so this is a open kitchen so open kitchen is there so inside a uh, step key staircase we placed so that is a staircase so for duplex so then one more uh, common washroom or a common uh, restroom or a bathroom whatever you call 
So then one more oh, bedroom is there. So this area indicates the cupboard and this pieces indicates the windows. So then this is the first floor, uh, one bedroom with the attached bathroom. So here you can observe door is inside a, a bedroom only. So then this is a balcony area. So you can place uh, uh, tables or you can place sofas and all like balcony. You guys know uh, what is balcony, right? So lobby balcony. So then uh, staircase. So this is one another uh, bedroom. Uh, maybe you can call it as a two second master bedroom or a second bedroom. So this is a place for utility. Uh, you can leave a empty space or you can place a plants. Uh, you can do a gardening and all or you can make it as a storeroom also. So this is a very basic simple plan. Okay. So that is uh, a basic a plan for any construction. So here also you can observe the plan. So normally a plan will be like. Uh, this so if it is a uh, more than two four three four uh, uh, two plan or uh, plan E plan B plan C like that it will be there. If it is the apartments and all, uh, you have a very bigger bigger sizes like ground floor, first floor, second floor, base one, base two, uh, parking one, parking two and all. So each and individual time you need to import a plan and you need to work according to the plans only. Then only you will get a proper output with the exact measurements. So make sure this is the only way, a uh, very proper way to import your CAD plan or 2D plan into the max. Okay. So after that also, uh, you need to uh, do some small uh, unit setups or unit measurements. So you need to cross check it once whether uh, your measurement unit is proper or not. So how to check that? So fine. So a very simple, so in the top you have a customize option, so click on customize, under that you have an option called unit setup, so click, so this unit setup is for your objects, is for your shapes, not for the plan, so remember this unit setup is for your shapes, whatever shapes you will draw for that, this is your unit setup or unit of measurement. So if you want to work with the meters, so turn on metric, so by default uh, you will get a meter, you can change it to millimeter, centimeter, meter, kilometer. So US standards, so preferably most of the cases everyone work with the feet and inches. So here you can observe the first one, one stands for feet, two stands for inches. So you can change that one by two, one by four, one by eight, like one digit, two digit, three digit you will get over there. So here you can observe default units of feet. So preferably most of the cases everyone work with the feet and inches. So few rare cases or if the measurement or the plan is very big, so they used to work with the meters. So you need to uh, check with your person who created a plan. According to that plan, you need to find your measurement unit. So usually sometimes I go with the meters, sometimes I go with the feet also uh, because I am flexible in both the things. I used to do uh, both the things depends on the kind of plan I used to work. Okay, so and make sure everything will be in feet only. So normally your house wall, exterior wall will be for ground floor 10 feet. So 10 feet means you will get a 3 meters. So you need to convert uh, if you are doing in a different measurement units. Okay, so if you select for meter, so in if you apply uh, any shape, you need to give 3 meters for 10 feet. 6 meter for 20 feet, like that you need to calculate. If it is inches, 12 inch is equal to 1 feet, you need to play and you need to convert your measurement, you need to inches to feet, feet to meters up to U. Okay. So I will show you a very sample. So currently it is in US standard feet. Okay. So take a box. So here you have an option length, width, height. So just randomly draw one box and lift it up. So I need a length of 2 feet or 3 feet, apply a 3 feet, so that is you can observe the length. So then I need a width of 1 feet, apply 1, so here you can observe currently it is, this one is 1 feet and this one is 3 feet, so here height I need a 10 feet, apply 10, so you can observe 10, 10 feet height. So normally this is how it will work with your measurement unit or in case if you are using this 
shapes so rectangle so just draw a rectangle so press w go back to your modify so here you have a option how much you uh, draw or how much size you given you can edit 5 feet i need i need a wall extrusion of 5 feet so modifier list press ex so ex stands for extrude so click on extrude so amount so i need 5 so apply 5 so 5 feet so in measurement unit also you have two things so 5 stands for uh, feet the next second part stands for inches i need 5 feet 5 inches apply you can also exact measurement you will get so you can use with this method also or you can go with this method also it's all the very very basic settings uh, measurement units you need to concentrate so one the major thing is the first thing is while importing your CAD plan so that is 2D DWG file so drawing CAD drawing the second thing is customize unit setup to measuring your shapes so for example if you change this matrix to meter apply ok so go back to your shapes ok so just draw a shape so in the measurement unit you can observe it stands with m so m means meters so if you need a height of 10 feet means just apply 3 meter so 3 meter is 10 feet so previously we are working with a unit uh, like uh, what feet and fractional inches apply that so here you can observe if you draw so i need 10 so here you can observe now there is no m so here because we changed it for inches and feet so this is stands from meter this is stands with inches and feet you can change each and individual time so again i am mentioning it's completely depends on the kind of plan you are placing so maybe in inches maybe in feet maybe in meters so some prefer for small small designs and all they prefer centimeters and millimeters uh, it's up to your requirement whatever measurement units you need you can use that okay so this is how normally uh, the procedural way of placing or importing your CAD plan and this is the way how to change your measurement units for your shapes and also for your CAD plan. So hope the session was informative. We will catch up in the next session. Hello everyone. This is Ashrit from Learn Digital Academy. So in this session, we will discuss on basic requirement for uh, elevation. So that is uh, for 3D architectural part. So where you will get the windows, how to play with the window settings, how to draw a staircase, how to use the walls and all, we will discuss. Okay. So where you will find, we will discuss one by one. In the right hand side, you can observe standard primitives. So just click on that. You will get one drop down menu. Under the drop down menu, you have options called, the first one is doors, so then windows, so then AC extended, so then staircase. So how to use this, we will discuss one by one. The first one, uh, we will start with the doors. So just select a door. In the door, we have three types of doors. So one is pivot, one is sliding and one is bipole. So how it will work, we will start. Uh, select a pivot door. So just click and drag right hand side and then release your mouse button. So then move your mouse little more uh, up or down. So then click again. In the right hand side, in the parameters you can observe, I have given a width, I have given a depth, but height is in zero. Now what you need to do, you need to move your mouse upside. So then to end, click. So now you can observe the door. So a very beautiful door you can observe. So after drawing also, you can customize this. I need a door of 7 feet, increase, a width of uh, 4 feet, yes, a depth, so depth means the thickness of the door frame, so you can observe, so fine, in the right hand side you can observe uh, depth, so depth means the thickness of uh, the frame of your window wall, okay. So after this also, uh, you have an option to customization. 
So how to customize it? I will show you. The first thing you need to turn on is segments. Press F4. So if you can able to identify this line, we call it as segments. So whenever you are working with a 3D, segments are important. So it will give you uh, outlines and it will give you a line segments, the line flow for your working area. So height with depth. So open option is there. You can open. See, you can open the door. So flip, swing, outside if you need open, inside if you need you can open, flip hing, so left hand side or right hand side, so it's up to you. So then double door means like this, double door options, so you can play with this thing. So this is a pivot door or pivoted door. So next one is a sliding doors, so normally you know what is sliding door or sliding window, the same thing, click and drag. So move, then up, how much height you need, the right side parameters are similar and same for all the doors. You can increase the height, you can increase the width and also you can play with the depth. So here you have a option of sliding. So slide also you can change flip side, so that means which one you need to slide, the left one or right one, so depends on your requirement you can change. So then one more option here you can observe is create frame, so this frame, increase the frame, the outer body, you can observe a frame. So then leaf parameter means this piece we call it as a leaf, so leaf thickness, thickness of the leaf, so then bottom, top, you can observe, see. You can customize each and individual things with all the doors and windows. So then bifold is there, so in the same way, what you need to do, just draw width, so then depth, so then height. So bifold, how it will work, just open it, you can observe, this is how your bifold will work. So in this also you have an option, a double door, so both the side it will uh, bifold open, so single door means single, uh, double door means both the side you will get. So again the similar option, frame options. So this, again the lift parameters, you have the same thing, you can play with this options. So if it is really necessary, uh, you can use this windows or the staircase or doors with the help of preset. So normally I prefer to use this default doors only whenever I am doing with the elevation. So once the door is done, the next thing is windows. So six types of windows we have, avenue window, casement window. Fixed window, pivoted, projected and sliding window. So how it will work, I will show you. The first one is avenue, so click and drag, so then move like this, okay. So just check, frame is there, uh, parameters are there, open window is there, so give open, you can observe like this. For ventilations and all, uh, they use, they prefer this kind of uh, windows. So you can utilize this for your ventilation or small area uh, to open showcase the ventilated part you can use this. So then the next one is casement window. So each and individual things you need to do experiments. So go back to modifiers, so just check casement window. So you have open option also, open it like this. So it will open in horizontal, one is horizontal open and one is vertical open. So which one you need, you can prefer. So you can give a two, so if it is two, you can utilize this for your restrooms, uh, where you, in your parking lots or garages or uh, in the kitchens and all, you can use this, a casement window. So then fixed window. So each and individual having their own property, so you can use that. So name itself specifying fixed. So there is no open option in this, it's a fixed. So few people, uh, they use ventilation, a uh, complete in a transparent glass, right? So no need to open the things and all, just you can place it and use as a transparent window. For that one, you can use fixed window. But you can play with the depth, height, width for all the windows. So then pivoted window, 
So draw it. So just check how it will work. So frame is there, glassing is there, open window option is there, open it like this. In theaters, malls and all, you can observe this kind of pivoted window. So you can utilize this pivoted windows. So projected, yes. So one more different type window we have that is projected window. So you can observe the projection over here. One it will open inside, one it will open outside like this. Projected windows. For each and individual windows, we have a option, thickness, depth, and all. So it's up to you. You can use this. See, looks very beautiful, looks very decent. You can please depends on the kind of designs you are doing. So then the last one is our sliding. So sliding doors already uh, you used it in the same way. Sliding windows. In the right side you have an option. So hung. So turn off horizontal to vertical or top to bottom it will change. See. So which kind of hung you need you can use that. So this is all your uh, windows. So I showcased you doors, I showcased you windows. So then we'll move for next part. So the next thing is AAC extended. So AAC extended you can observe wall. So click on wall. So give a parameters. So width, how much thickness of your wall you need, how much height you need. I need a wall of 10 feet and a thickness of 6 inches. 6 inches, not in feet, inches. So just click and drag. You can observe a wall. So release your mouse button. So click. Wherever you will click, you will get a wall like this. You can draw in any random direction. The walls. So wall. So if you move your starting point and ending point in the same place, at the end it will ask you an option weld point. That means you need to close the wall, right? So that's why it will ask you weld. If you need, give a S, otherwise no, I need S. So after that S, uh, it will continue with the wall because that is a closed area. So again a new wall will start continuing from that particular part. So if you don't want, just right click, this will be disconnected. So now you can observe, this is a wall, you can move, you can build a compound walls, you can build a, a elevation walls uh, like for exterior things or interior things, you can utilize this walls. So then the next thing is a railings, so railings means for balcony and all you have a railing, right. So just draw and take it up, so you can observe the railings, so for staircase sides and all we need to place the railings. For balcony and all, we need to place the railings. You can use this railings for your design. So in modifiers, you have an option top rail. If you don't want square, you can change it to a round. So here you can observe a round. So if you need rectangle or square, use that. If you need round, you can use that. You can increase the width, height and depth of each and individual things. So lower rail, this one. So square or round. If you need more pieces or more blocks, click on this small box. In the left to top, you will get one lower rails spacing option. Increase the count. By default, one is there. How much you need? You can increase like fencing or like a mesh. So that is our rails. So you guys need to remember all these things. So because so once we started working with the elevations, so we need to use all these things. Of course, if it is a duplex or if it is a multi-store building, you need to use rails you need to use a staircase of course there will be doors and windows so that's why uh, i am showcasing everything so then the next one is stairs so staircase must and should so four type of stairs we have so one is straight l type u type and spiral so straight so just uh, click and drag it so move up so you can observe the staircase right so go back to your modify options. In the modify we have option type open closed. So you can see the changes. So this is open window, sorry, open staircase. 
this is closed staircase in between the steps it will be closed and then box it will fill complete wall so you can use any of these things so then layout length how much far distance you need so length see so then width how much width you need so overall height so total height how much you need currently it is in 2 feet height only i want to increase up to 5 feet you can observe it is in 5 feet height so number of steps here you have a option you need to turn off or turn on any one of these things you will get a number of steps option you can observe you can increase and decrease the steps so by default you can able to play with only two things either overall height rise height or rise height rise count or overall rise so in that case you need to switch this you need to pin any one of this thing that will be turned off other two will be enabled you can use this so this is our street stairs the next one is l shape so l shape stairs so let's draw our l shape stairs you can observe l shape like this so different different things we have for everything you have this options closed box so according to your requirement you can use your steps so length 1 length 2 width angle which angle you want to rotate so uh, 90 degree minus or 90 degree plus so you can observe completely right hand side or left hand side how much you need you can so offset a space between this step to this step this place or this piece we call it as a landing area or a platform so where it is landing so then except that all other options remains same you can check it once so then u step u steps so one is straight one is l and the other one is u you can observe u so u stairs so most of the cases you will get u steps maximum in all elevations like uh, duplex house or multi story buildings and all you can able to identify this kind of thing so here also you have a option so you can utilize this one is open closed box so play with the settings length one length two offset you can give a gap between this portion to this portion that is offset path so then the last one is spiral so spiral stairs in the formation of circular so we have a staircase you can use this See, like this so this is your spiral stairs for spiral stair also we have a modify options you can observe one is clockwise one is counter clockwise in which direction you need you can use stairs and also radius very wide you need you can use reverse how much rotations you need like this so then width how much you need you can give so this all are our steps and uh, different types of staircases okay so parameters will remain same but the major thing so depends on your plan according to the plan which kind of steps you need to use you can use and one more thing is in aec extended we have a foliage foliage means by default we have few trees and plants so if you want to use in your designs you can use that for example banyan tree just click so you will get one big banyan tree see so completely so by default it's look like this so but after rendering the process of taking output we call it as a render after rendering you will get a very beautiful and proper output so you can use this so parameters also we have the same how much big tree you need so how density you need density means number of thickness the leaf and all so seeds if you need only leaf so except leaf turn on everything so fruits flowers you can switch between each and individual things okay so i will show you in the render 
So how to do the render? The shortcut is Shift Q. So if you press Shift Q, you can observe over here. So very less leaf I have because density is 0.1. I need a one density. Or in the top you have a render production option. So click on that. It will render it and it will show you. So now you can observe the tree with the leaf. Zoom in a little more. So unrender it. So you will get a proper look over here. So we can change the color of each and individual things. We can add a different colors, different materials for each and individual part. Okay. So depends on the designs. We can add a textures. We can add a materials and all. We'll discuss that all in next classes or in next session. So in this session, we discuss on windows, staircase, railings, foliage, and then doors. So just uh, go ahead, uh, practice this thing. So make sure uh, you need to work with this thing only. This is all the very, very basic requirement to create a beautiful exterior or interior design. I hope the session was informative. We'll catch up in the next session. Hello everyone. This is Ashrit from Learn Digital Academy. So till now, uh, we discussed on how to use stairs, how to play with the interface, how to use the basic shapes, uh, modifiers, windows, doors and all. So now, we'll start with our basic elevation. The same normal process, go for file, import, import. So just find your plan, uh, where you have saved your plan. So currently, I have uh, one CAD file. Uh, that is BWG drawing. Open it. If you want to rescale the size, so you have an option over here. You can rescale this thing we discussed on last sessions. So if you don't want, just click OK. Your plan will be placed uh, inside your area, working area. In the top view, select a plan. So here you can observe I have selected a plan. So it is uh, completely in the top view. So by pressing W, you can move your plan from one place to another place. So make sure select everything and then move. So because why I'm moving means I need to place my plan exactly on the grids. So in all the views uh, where you can observe dark black line, one is horizontal line and one is vertical line, we call it as a center of a working area. If you click on this home button, your grid will pop up your grid will appear. So our plan is exactly on the middle of your work area. So now uh, this is a duplex house. So duplex, uh, the staircase from the outside only. So you can observe a main door uh, in the entrance. So one bedroom, two bedroom. So two types of staircase they added. So one is from the outer end also they added and one is from the inside also they added. So depends on the requirement, uh, they have an option to uh, use their elevations. So what we need to do, uh, the first thing you need to find which one is ground and which one is first floor. So if here uh, as it is a duplex, so here you can see the kitchen is over here, living area is over here and one bedroom is there, one puja room is there. So that means this plan is our ground floor. So let's create a walls. So normally walls will be in a basic shape uh, that is uh, rectangles. So now what I will do. So here you can observe the shapes, right? Yesterday we discussed on shapes or last classes we discussed on the shapes. So click on the shapes. So use a rectangle. So draw a rectangle. So from this is a window area till this block. So then click on modify option. So click on extrude. In a modifier list, you have an option of extrude, EXT. So I need a height of 10 feet, apply 10. So then scroll down. So here you can observe the wall. The height of the wall is 10 feet. Okay. So in the same way, build a complete wall in a 360 degree. So with interior, if you have a wall, so you have an option to build an interior wall also in the same way. So build a wall. So let's begin to create a walls. So rectangle. So click extrude. So same 10 feet I need. 
so the first basic thing i am finishing up with the walls so then later i will start with uh, windows and doors extrude so you can observe so just draw a wall a complete 360 degree so later you can add a windows and doors so just i'm using rectangle i'm drawing and i'm using extrude option so create a complete wall you can use different different method so this is one of the easiest method i'm showcasing this is the place for ventilation so small wall is there you can observe actually yes so almost uh, the outer block walls are ready so now i need to go with the inner blocks extrude so if you want to change the extrude value so once you click the extrude so in the bottom you have a option how much height and how much uh, amount of extrude you need here you can decrease so now you can observe the ground floor walls are ready so now the inner part so that is inside so just draw walls so extrude so make sure you need to apply extrude otherwise your wall will not be in a height or thickness so always so once you draw with the things you need to press or go for modify and apply extrude so this is your and the wall so the puja room so then bedroom is there so create a wall for the bedroom so created complete thing in a single piece so later press extrude so you will get all three in a single blocks so then here we have a uh, restroom so use so go for modifier apply extrude a complete wall portion is done so then kitchen a main door and wherever you have a ventilations we need to place a wall a 3 feet wall a middle is for our window area so now what you need to do you need to draw a wall of 3 feet so why i will show you so just draw a wall of 3 feet extrude amount i need a 3 feet so because next take a copy of this thing hold shift and drag up so i need to move this to the top exactly top that is i am moving a z axis in the z type 7 so top is 3 feet bottom is 3 feet this 4 feet gap is to place your windows so repeat the same process for all uh, window area extrude so then copy so z axis 7 so why i am using this part so exactly it will go and snap or swap to the complete mold uh, area so exactly it will match the distance over there so then rectangle extrude so then copy 
so seven. So this is our door area, uh, the main entrance. So for door, no need of bottom piece. So only top piece is enough for us. So in this case, what you need to do, extrude it for three feet, and directly move it to seven. So don't take a copy, directly move it because it's a door area. So wherever door you are placing, so don't need a bottom wall, just place a top wall. So again, rectangle. So extrude, copy, move z-axis to 7 feet, see, you will get a beautiful thing. So do this thing, a complete house, so maybe if it is a one floor, maybe it is a two floor, not an issue, you can use this. So extrude, control V if you press, it is a shortcut for copy, so 7. So then this is a ventilation area for your restrooms. So now instead of 3 feet wall, I am placing it 5 feet wall. Right, normally uh, bathrooms and all 5 feet wall. So then take a copy. So move the same 7. So in the top you can observe extra portion. So 5 feet, 2 feet gap, 7 feet plus 3 feet. So that means you need to is it for three? So three feet plus two feet plus five feet is equal to ten feet. See, a complete uh, structure block is ready. So with interior walls also. Okay. So once it is done, the next part is we need to place our doors and windows. Okay. So we have a two floor. So here you can observe two floor structure is there. So what I will do, so instead of uh, taking this, so just for the purpose, if you need a multiple floor building, so take a copy of the same building if the plan is same, similar building if the plan is same. So now what I will do, yes, so first time create a doors and windows, so then later take a copy. So how to create a doors, yes, so last uh, we discussed on AC extended doors, windows, right? door so i need a pivoted door so normally everywhere you will get a pivoted door only so just draw a door so click so height how much height you need so seven feet normally height yes so give a seven feet so if you want to give open so here you have open option open so i need to open in opposite direction flip Yes. So now you can observe I placed a door. So then windows. I need a sliding window. So sliding window. So draw a sliding window. Yes. Sorry, wait. So this one by me. So I draw a sliding door. So in the place of door. You need to draw a door. In the place of window, you need to use a windows. So window, sliding a windows. So make sure you need to concentrate on these things. Yes. So now, in modifier, you have an option of open. Yes, right. So open. So now it's opening up and down. Turn off the hung. You can observe. It's open sideways. So just for reference purpose, so just we need to showcase window is there. That's why I'm using a window. So place the windows or draw the windows in all the directions. Okay. So repeat the process. Draw the windows in all the directions. So you can observe, I'm drawing the windows. So this part, you can use a normal window also, or you can use a casement, pivoted, fixed. So it's up to you, uh, which window you need, uh, you can draw. So now there also I'm using the sliding windows only. 
So normally uh, it will be pivoted or having window. So you can go with that uh, windows. So sliding. Service. All the please uh, windows I have cleared it. So door. So just I want. I don't want to open the doors and windows. So I will close it. So zero. So now I need a mold, right? A roof part we need to place. So just imagine this is a two floor or three floor building. So now I want to place a mold. So use a rectangle. So go back to shapes. A rectangle. So in the top view, so just draw one rectangle. Hello. Manele di nako. Lo, anondo mukala nergente and the dog. Early, early, anondo were a gilly. Ah, our elegy were the right. Sari, I don't in another way alone and work in a shoe. Okay, so just go for the top view with the help of rectangle. So draw one a complete mold a rectangle. So maybe up to staircase if you want to draw. Yes, of course, you need to draw up to staircase because it's our roof. So Otherwise, you can split the roof also. So currently, you can observe. Uh, just I have a, a roof. So this one, I am going to give a point three, uh, like three inch. So three inches of roof. So you can give six inch. You can give nine inch. Uh, depends on the requirement. So now you can observe it's completely filled. Okay. So now the next step is what we need to draw a staircase. So where? In the same uh, parameters, so go for states. So this is a U, U. You can observe U shape. So draw a U shape states. So the first of all, you need to draw width. So from here to here. So then up. So W. So place it. So I need in the reverse direction, not in this way. I want to place in the reverse. So here you have an option. So left and right. So you can interchange. The next one is you need to flip completely. In the top here, you can observe one button called mirror. So mirror it and just apply OK. Yes. Now I got a proper direction. Exactly. I got a proper direction. So height I need till the roof, right? So increase the height first. So overall height, I need a 10 feet. Yes, so little more height you can give. So I will show, I will do a one by one. The length. So I need a closed stairs like this. So then this part, number of steps I need at 21 steps. So normally it will be 21 steps. So now play with the length. So length one and length two. So like this, yes. So now you have an option. You can see oh, very beautiful. So now increase the height. Increase the height overall. Height. Yes, this looks uh, clear. So if you want to decrease the length, uh, decrease the length. Yes. So this is also fine, and this is looks a uh, decent. The staircase part is. Done. The next part is you need to add grills, right? So you need to add a grills for your staircase. So yesterday we discussed on, or in the last session we discussed on how to use a, a railings. So here we have a railing options. So we easy extended. So use a railing. So but I need a railing exactly on this path. So from year to year. In this direction, I need a railing. So railings and all, 
you can add in the later after the elevation design because few prefer a front elevation is completely with a closed object or front elevation is completely with the wood stones and all so later you can add a railing also uh, currently uh, you can leave the railing part empty so now the next step is so after raising so after staircase i need a platform right yes so we need a platform so again go back to your shapes so go for top view so from this part till the end of your plan and the staircase add one platform so platform means this area the roof area extension of the roof area because after staircase we need a landing right so give a same amount of extrusion that is 0.3 inches 3 inches so now we have a landing area also we have a next pieces also so now the next thing is this is a two floor building or uh, this is a three floor building not an issue so go to exactly any one view so maybe front view or side view select everything take a copy if it is a similar take a copy so give number of copies i need to apply okay so you can observe the same structure with the same thing so everything similar everything same so normally apartments and all you can able to find in this way okay so now the design part so now according to the plan we designed or we build a walls right according to the plan we created a walls doors windows and all so now we need to plan for the outlook so what kind of outlook we need to give so if you give a different different outlook how it will look so which looks will give you a better output or a better option so we need to decide that so the first thing is for windows i need a frame yes so here the side window you can observe right so we need a frame so now what i will do so instead of drawing a single frame from top to bottom i will draw one frame so how so use a rectangle go to any side view where you can see a windows yes so here i can easily able to see the windows so just draw one frame from top to bottom with the help of rectangle so now all w so now you can observe one complete rectangle go for modifier in a rendering option just turn on enable in render enable in viewport so you can identify the thickness so change it to rectangle i need a length of of feet and a width of of feet so that is 6 inch by 6 inch so then place it like this so now you can observe a complete a window frame okay so take a copy of the same thing and please over here because both are similar both are same now you can observe i placed the side design so then we need to design the uh, top area the portico area balcony areas and the roof areas so design one by one one by one according to your ideas and concepts so this kind of designs whatever you do with the help of your own creativity we call it as uh, elevations so this is uh, elevation design so according to the plan everyone will build a uh, walls right so like partitions this is for bedroom this is for living area this is for kitchen and all so now you need to design the outlook outlook will attract you most so then the next part is what so let's here i need to design few thing from this part to this part in between i want to add a blocks so block means like a railing kind of things and all so how so just i will draw one box so maximum you can observe i'm doing everything with a box so where so here from this part to this part so draw a box so go back to different view so here you can observe the box right yes 
So how much thickness you need? I give up thickness. So in apartments and all, you can see this kind of elevations, very beautiful elevations. Height I need only six inches. So how? So six inches. So only six inches. So length is fine, uh, not an issue. So take a copy and please for your complete design. So to take a multiple copies, we discussed array. So tools, array. So which direction Z axis? So number of counts 10. Turn on the preview, move your Z axis. Like this. So I need more. So increase the number of counts. So you can observe very beautifully with the preview I am copying. So decrease. So one more. Yes. So you can give n number of things with the help of array. Apply OK. So now you can observe a very beautiful uh, elevation design for the side angle. So side view looks decent and good. So now the front part. So where you can see staircase, right? That part. So what I will do? I want to add a complete wall. So again, I'm using a box. So just I'm drawing one box. So give a thickness. So length is not there. Again, uh, you can give uh, six inches. A thickness, height, 10 plus 10 plus 10. So 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet. So 30 feet. So because three floor building, right? So 30 feet. I want to showcase some part of uh, staircase. So give a gap like this. So increase the height more. 35 feet. Yes. See. Now what I will do. So instead of width of 13, 14 feet is there. I will divide into three parts. So left hand side a block. Right hand side a block. Middle portion I will fill with some design. Or some empty spaces and all. So 14. Just imagine it's a 14 by 3. Or you can make 7, uh, 14 right. So middle part I need only 4. Uh, feet gap. So I will take it as 5. So 5 for this end and 5 for this end. Okay. So a middle position you can observe a gap. So then take a copy of the same thing. Place it exactly in the middle. You can observe. So very beautiful thing. So very decently I am doing. So you guys are doing for first time. So keep a reference. So the basic wall height I need is 5 feet. The ground floor. So 5 feet height I need. So then take a copy. So this is for first floor. So from first floor instead of 5 feet I will go with the 4 feet. So 4 feet. The landing area. So then again take a copy. And please over here. Yes. So again to the top. Finish it up. Take a copy and finish it up. So now you can observe a gap. So in this place, you can place a railings. You can place a glass. You can place uh, whatever ideas you have. You can place. Otherwise, you can leave as a empty part also. So not an issue. Okay. So one by one, one by one, we need to uh, create a uh, elevation design. So this side. Yes, this side also you need to fill. So I am going to take a copy. Then I am rotating. So which angle Z axis? So 90 degree. So then place it properly. So exactly you need to place. So I don't want to leave. A empty space means. So place it. Otherwise for this portion also. You can do similar thing like this. A designing. So there, here, there, here and all. You can give a empty spaces. The front portion almost it's done. So now the balcony area. I need a railings. Uh, glass railings and all. The first part you need to draw is drop down. So from 
uh, mold level to one and a half feet or two feet, you need to give a drop down. So drop down means uh, inside. Uh, if rain is there, it should not affect your doors and all, right? It should not enter into your windows and all. That part we call it as a drop down. So in the L shape, I need to draw a drop down. So here. So I'm using a line tool actually. So for the drop down, I'm using a line tool. So you can observe one point is in the top and one point is in the bottom. So go back to lines, vertex, individual points, we call it as vertex. Select that vertex and please uh, where you need to place your drop down, you can move the things. Okay. So otherwise, very simple option if you're still uh, getting confused. So take a copy of the same box only. So here you have an option. How much I need? I need one feet to two feet, right? So 1.6. So it's one and off. So place it over here. Just you need to move and place your drop down. So under the roof, exactly I need to place. Yes. So extend the sheep. So to extend the sheep, we have an option called FFD, free form D form. So modifier list type F. So FFD 2 into 2 into 2, 2 points. Open this FFD panel, control points. So drag and move this. Done. See. Take a copy and place to the bottom blocks also. So copy and paste the uh, bottom part that is a drop down for all the floors. So ground floor, first floor, second floor. So finish in the both the side. So right hand side also you need to place it properly. So take a copy and then wherever you need uh, required places. So take a copy and place it. So copy, rotate. So x axis, y axis, z axis, check it is in z axis. So that is 0 or 90. Yes. So then place it. The extra part you will get right. So already we are using FFD. Open that control points. So move it and place it back. So again repeat the process. So one piece. Copy. So again, the second part, you need to copy for the ground floor. So finish. So now this looks more decent. This looks more pretty. So now you can observe you are building in 360 view, side, front, uh, top, bottom. So still a lot more things uh, we need to do. So one is the balcony design, then the roof design, and then the painting part, materials and texturing part. So we'll discuss uh, one by one. Hope uh, the session was informative. We'll catch up in the next session. Hello, everyone. This is Ashrit from Learn Digital Academy. So now you can see uh, exterior elevation design. So now we need to give a detailed uh, colors, detailed uh, railings and all. So because already we constructed with the walls, uh, we did a basic design. So in the left hand side also we did. So then the only left thing is uh, you need to design your balcony. So then also you need to design the roof and you need to play with the colors. So let's design a balcony uh, first. So already you have a railings, right? So you guys know how to play with the railings and all. So where you will find the railings? So under the, this menu, so or under this drop down, uh, you have an option called AC extended. So AC extended uh, railing is there. So but I need a railing on particular path. So this is my path, like L shape. So with the help of line, so draw. Or uh, L. So from where? So this point to this point. So from here to 
here okay so exactly like this i want to place a railing so what so turn off the enable in render and turn off enable in viewport so now you can see you have a line only line outline you can observe so next go back to railing option so where so railing so click on railing so inside a railing you have a option called pick a railing path so just select that and the line which you draw so that is our path click on that so now you can observe your railing from starting the path and it is ended in the ending path but you need to change few things so here you have a option called segments just increase the segments if you increase the segments your railing will be follow through that path whatever path you have drawn so now you can observe your railing is in the l path so this looks more uh, decent this looks more beautiful right yes of course so then the next step is select your railing so try to play with the railings so height how much height you need uh, 3.6 and 3 and of feet is there now that is enough for us so place exactly to the floor yes so select the line if you want to move if you want to change so select the vertex so move you can observe your railing is moving from one position to another position so just by shifting the points you can move or you can switch between the railings so just select the line a point move and you can alter so then select again the railing the bottom rails i need more than one that is lower rails click on this option lower rail spacing instead of one give two three how much you need you can give so you have a option and then close it yes so one is enough so take a copy and please in all the floors first floor second floor for the third floor also i want to repeat the same thing so take a copy and place it so each and individual floor you have a option you can edit in each and individual floor you can place in each and individual floor so now you can observe so almost the front area the balcony part the portico area is finished so now we will work with the top so complete this piece i want to close so how to close yes so you can use the line again so line so go for top view from where from this particular portion a complete edge part i want to close so now you can observe i need to close but this line i need to move this down so you have a line over here go to modifiers turn on enable rendering enable viewport i need a wall height with 3 so that is length so 3 feet yes exactly 3 feet wall you will get so just place on the roof area so now all the side you can observe it's completely filled it's completely packed so this part if you need to close yes of course you need to close so you can extend this piece or what you can do so just move this part and decrease the width so by default or previously we took a copy of 5 feet so now i will take a 3 feet so 3 feet is enough for me so here in between the same block or same structure you can keep so like completely grills if you want to place you can place so take a copy and this one i need with a base right that is a ground floor 5 feet height take a copy so height change to 5 so this is enough so then here you can see uh, you have uh, done with the help of array right the same pattern i need in this area also so in between this piece so i will use the same method over here so make sure you need to align it properly otherwise in between you will get a gaps in between you will get a edges uh, mismatch so make sure you need to 
do in a proper way so how much height you need i need this much only like half of it or you can decrease up to you so we just outer side i need like this so not exactly inside a wall so wherever you need you can place so not uh, 0.6 or so like i need only 3 inches so that is also fine it's up to you guys so whatever requirement you have you need to play with that so now go back to ra so in the right hand side for your preview purpose you have a color option change the color so for your preview tools ra so again it's in a z axis turn on the preview so number of counts or previous count it will take 22 yes so decrease this gap a small gap is enough so now you can observe this looks more or uh, decent this looks more beautiful increase the counts yes that is enough apply okay so now this is my corner view so this part also is designed this area also designed so it's a up to you what kind of things you need to place or what kind of color combinations you need to add okay so elevation part is ready so now what next yes so for this boxes you can observe empty place right i need to add a frame so previously we added a frame for window right here like this i need to add a frame for each and individual box use a rectangle so find your front view so this is your front view yes so select a wall so four things i have selected alt 2 uh, multiple selection in the bottom you can observe one thing called isolate selection click on that selected object will display except that everything will be hide so i'm drawing a rectangle one that is framing two so once your work is done again press back so you will get your normal things so the box is too big actually so decrease the width so that is length is three feet is there i don't want three feet i need this much only that is off feet so off feet is more than enough so you can use off of it so that is six inches point uh, uh, six inches normal six inches so here we are working with a inches and feet so that's why i'm typing point that is six inches yes <coughs> so everything looks uh, clear so add a base so there is no basement at all so use one box or use one plane so that is also fine so i'm going to use a box so draw a box from where from this part in this part so just a platform surface so it's too height so height i don't want this much so very small amount of height is more than enough just for our reference purpose so you need to add a basement right so that's why so few people prefer box few people will work with the planes so you can utilize uh, whichever things you need okay now the complete uh, structure is ready the complete part is ready i need to add a compound right so compound we need to place yes so how to place a compound so just imagine uh, we have a five feet wall uh, around your building five feet compound uh, you need to uh, place a compound also so place how so right hand side only i need a compound so because left hand side is completely packed up or any one side i need a compound so maybe this area so just what you need to do according to your design or according to your plan you need to rise a wall again so rise a wall this one so you can rise your wall already l shape uh, we have so i am taking a copy of the same thing please exactly over here for the floor so exactly to the edge you can place so then this one the box you can delete the ffd 
So height I need around 4 feet, yeah that is enough. So the big gate, just imagine it's a big gate. The middle space is to place a gate. So this one also, deleting the FFD. So the height of 4 feet. So I need to extend this completely, right? Now add FFD again. So under FFD control points, stretch your wall. So for the back, now I am going to copy the same thing. Apply. Okay. So now this is your utility space or the compound. So now it looks completely perfect. It looks completely clear. So number of buildings you need in the same way, in the similar way, take a copy and leave. So now I need to add a color actually. Yes. So we'll start with adding the colors. How to add a color? So first of all, add same color for all the places. Press Ctrl A. It will select all the shapes for complete model. Press M. M stands for material. So select your material. So select the material. Change the ambient color. Ambient means your color. And the third one. So assign material to selection. Just click that. Now you can observe everything is in white. Then minimize this. So to render the shortcut is shift Q. So you guys also know to render shortcut is shift Q. I need to take output in this view. Okay. So this view like corner view. A corner view output I need. So to check the preview shift Q. That is render. Now you can observe your model in completely white shade. So let's do a few uh, render settings. So here you have an option, a render setup or shortcut is F10. So click. So I am using a V-Ray render engine. So V-Ray is one of the render engine. I am using V-Ray. Rendering option, save it to V-Ray next. So then in the common uh, you need to give what quality render you need. So, V-Ray. So, in V-Ray, mention this settings. Uh, if you want to make a note, you can make a note. So, uh, follow these settings, you will get a proper output. So, type progressive. You can give it bucket also. Two different types of render outputs will get. Under image filter, change the filter to Mitchell. So, Mitchell is the major filter normally I prefer. So, then again GI. GI stands for global illumination. So change your primary engine to uh, irradiance map, secondary engine to a uh, light catchy, then open irradiance map, current preset is I, so I need medium is more than enough. This is the basic uh, render setting. So then common setting, how much area you need to render, what size you need to render. So I need a custom size because I have a width is less, height is more. I need a height of 1500. Uh, sorry, width of 1500 and again height of uh, 2000, but you can't able to see the preview, right? Yes, to see the preview, you need to press a shortcut shift F. Shift F is already there. So what you need to do again, change it or oh, perspective. So uh, save frames, this is your save frame. This is the area now it will render. So zoom in and place it properly, yes. So this is the angle I am going to take a, a render output, yes. So this looks uh, more clear. If you need a more width, go back to render setting. So decrease the things. So where, where is that? Yes, it will take some time to load. Make sure that each and individual time after doing some changes, save your file. So width 1500 is there. So if you need more, increase it. So, 1600, so you can decrease the height, it's up to you, up to your requirement, you can please and you can do the changes. This is your complete uh, render view. So, now press shift Q, it's rendered, so you can check. So, it will take a time because already we done with the render settings. So, once you done with the render setting, here you can observe the process is slow. To cancel the render, escape. Okay. So, render setting uh, is done. So, everywhere I added the same 
color. So now turn off the safe zone, shift F. So now change the colors. Okay, change the colors, play with the color. So for railings and all, I need a black color, press M. So here you have a color option. So change the color. I am using V-Ray render engine. So that's why I prefer V-Ray render. V-Ray materials also. Select the material. In the right hand side, you can observe standard. Click on that. So there you will get a material editor. Under material browser, select a V-Ray. Use V-Ray MTL. So because I am using V-Ray, that's why V-Ray material. So change diffuse to black. I need a reflection, glossiness. So here reflect option is there now click on black and change it to white. So then you will get a reflection in the metallic part. So just click this. So now you can observe it is in a black. Okay. So then for wood the option, you can use the wood uh, download and you can place. Otherwise select one, two. So here you have just a normal color is also fine. So change the color. So that is brown color I need. So just add a brown. So one do, two do, three do, apply. So now doors are in brown. So overall building now you can observe it is in uh, white. So I prefer white and different combinations. So this frame and this frame I need in a gray. So dark gray. So change it to grey and apply, yes. So again in the same way, this blocks, whatever blocks you added over here. So in the left hand side also, you can select all your blocks. So for the blocks also, I need a dark grey shade only. So that's why I am selecting all the blocks. apply the same yes so gray color you can observe fine so this looks good for me so white and gray combination this looks very really, really good for this front area i need a stones how to use a stone so just search for stones. So already I have a stone in my local drive. So I I used to take the same stone. So where I have my own things. So I am finding the same stone. So so I am dark stones. We call it as a cladding stone for outer walls and all. We call it as a cladding stones. So just uh, download our cladding stones. So wherever you can find the cladding stones, you can use that so now here i have a cladding stone so just drag and uh, release on your material or find a path go back to your max here you have a diffuse option click on that use bitmap so just find uh, where you have your cladding stones so where so here black stone wall open it then select the areas where and all you need to use your cladding stones apply it. So you applied your cladding stones but still you can't able to find. So you need to turn on this option show shaded materials in viewport. So now you can observe the stone. So this part also I need a stone apply it. Yes. So but zoom in you can't able to identify the stones properly. What you need to do for this you need to add one modifier. In modifier list, we have an option called map scalar. So apply map scalar. So if you apply map scalar, you can observe stones looks more decent now. So this one also I need a same map scalar. Yes. Again for this also I need a same that is map scalar. So now it looks more uh, decent. It looks more beautiful. So to take a render outputs, we need a camera. We need a lights. So cameras, lights, and all we need to place. Okay. So the major thing in this, uh, we created a complete elevation. 
we added a materials we added a textures and all so whatever detailed things you need uh, just you need to go ahead and make a detailed one so fine so the elevation part is done so the next step is we need to add a lights and also we need to fix the camera so we'll continue this in uh, coming sessions okay so make sure here everything is filled everything is aligned properly it's fine everything looks uh, decent this portion i need a glass actually yes so this portion i need a glass okay so select this frames and isolate it so only i can able to identify the play, uh, frame draw a plane so plane 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 okay so now you can observe three planes so that is for glass i am using so go back to materials so select a new material use vire material so use normal vire material you can name your material here you have a option i will name as a glass to give a glass material how to make a glass so change your diffuse to normal gray only a reflection white and also refraction white so here you can observe it's completely transparent to look into that so here you have a option background on that so now you can observe it's a transparent glass select and apply so i need a little bit blue shade so change the fog color so just decrease the fog color so you will get a blue tint here you can observe in a material viewport it is in a blue automatically whatever changes you do for material it will update automatically in your work area so i added with a glass also all major things are done so i need a gate so how to add a gate you can model a gate you can design a gate otherwise with the help of textures you can use and you can draw a gate so what i will do so just i am drawing a plane for the plane i will add a gate texture so now you can observe a plane i need more height actually so 5 feet gate i need increase the height place it i have a gate texture okay so where you will so i i have few gate textures also i will just uh, try to add that so go to google and download a gate images a gate textures you will get so we i need to find actually just so better whatever required things you need so download and keep uh, everything in one folder so then it will be easier to work also so it will be very much easier to play uh, with your things so if you have everything in a single folder where where why can't i able to find a gate and uh, we uh, yes so here i have a gate two gates i have so copy the path go back to your max material find a new material so diffuse bitmap open so which gate you need i want to place this gate open it and apply it show so you place the gate but it's not even matching properly you need to scale i don't need this pillar so i need only gate so in modifier list we have one more option called uv mapping so type uvw map so under uvw map open this and select the gizmo so and use rescale rescale r is the shortcut and scale it so w you can move the textures up and down you can place the texture 
wherever you need and then go back to close. So now I have a gate, I have a compound, I have a glass, I have a door, I have everything. Okay. So now the next uh, thing is we need to start working with the lightings. We need to add a uh, beautiful uh, backdrops or we need to add a camera and then only it is possible to take a, a render outputs. I hope the session was informative. We will catch up in next session. Hello everyone. This is Ashrit from Learn Digital Academy. So last uh, few sessions uh, we discussed on how to create uh, elevation, how to play with the materials, how to add a textures, how to add a cladding stones, everything we discussed. Okay. So before taking any final outputs, the major thing you need to do uh, lighting effects. Yes, of course, what kind of light uh, you need to take a render, how to place with the light, how to play with the light and all uh, we need to work. Okay, so in this session, uh, we'll discuss on how to work with the lights and all. So my basic elevation and uh, moreover, according to my camera, uh, the angle, whatever you need. So already uh, we fixed it up. So let's uh, create a lights. So what kind of light you need? So yes, exactly, uh, I need a sunlight. So where you will get a sunlight? In the right hand side here, you have a bulb symbol. That one we call it as lights. So under lights, we have different, different things. So currently I'm working with a V-Ray. So that's why I select a V-Ray. So V-Ray light. So V-Ray IES light, V-Ray ambient light and V-Ray sun. So for day scene or evening scene, uh, if it is a exterior, V-Ray Sun will give you a beautiful output. This is a basic uh, lighting. So that is V-Ray Sun. So just select a V-Ray. So anyway, in your viewport, so drag like this. So if you're dragging like this, it will be in uh, exactly in your viewport. What do you need to do? The better option is go for front view or side view. So use a V-Ray. From top to bottom, you drag. So top one is Sun. The bottom one is your target so would you like to automatically add a v-ray sky environment yes so of course we need a sky in the background so that's why you need to add a v-ray sky click yes okay so then here you can observe your uh, lighting so you can move this so from where you want to place or where you need to uh, place your uh, light direction and all so the basic light is placed the next thing is light intensity or light modifiers. So go for modifiers. So just scroll down in the right hand side, you have a option uh, light intensity that is intensity multiplier, the brightness of your sun. So here you can observe the brightness of your sun intensity multiplier you need to change. So then size multiplier means the size of your sun. So how much size you need, you can increase the size multiplier. Okay, so these are all the major two things you need to concentrate uh, whenever you are working with a V-Ray Sun. Okay, so let's check with the output. So to check the output, first wherever you need, uh, you need to add all the lights. So just I added only one light, so I need uh, only one light uh, that is enough, more than enough for Sun. So this angle I want to take a output. So just fix the angle. We need to add a camera. Without camera, it is very difficult to check the proper preview. So just add a camera. So where? So again, go back to your list. So exactly right hand side to the light, you have a camera option. So you can observe. So V-Ray camera. So one is V-Ray doom camera, one is V-Ray physical camera. So most of the cases, 99% or oh, I can say it as 100% take a render outputs everyone prefer V-Ray camera so just what you need to do the same thing left hand side also I have a V-Ray parameters so here you can observe this all are our lights cameras settings and all so what I will do just I will click on camera so now you can observe the grids horizontal grids and vertical grids and also currently you are looking through a camera angle how can we able to find a proper camera angle? How I am saying it is in a camera angle. So very simple. Here you can observe this viewport previously stands with a perspective. Now it is in V-Ray camera. So once your camera angle is fixed, don't change any direction 
in your camera angles if you want to change go back to perspective and change anything in your viewport maybe material maybe objects or maybe shapes or if you want to do some changes in design use perspective view so click on v-ray camera so here you have a option change it to perspective so now this thing is in perspective you can observe this is your sunlight and this is your camera everything we placed again to check the render go back to camera perspective camera currently i am using only one camera that's why it is showing v ray camera one so if you have a number of cameras it will show you a number of things so settings so then always you need to turn on safe frames so safe frames this is my area now you can observe your camera is too far right so it's too far so what you need to do so go back to top view so select your camera so just move your camera front so in which direction you move your camera will work so you can take how much front i'm moving how much uh, area or where you want to place everything it will showcase over here okay so just i'm playing each and individual things with the camera angles only you can observe you can move your camera angles in all the directions so we read target that is camera target i have selected you can observe you can move the camera so you can select both the things and you can move together so if you're facing difficulty to move one by one so select both the things and move together so we have camera tools also so camera tools also will work in the similar way so you can use camera tools otherwise you can go with your normal things so you can observe i'm moving my camera in all the direction if i move in top so it will give you a top angle so top movements and all see so just you need to fix the camera how much area you need to render properly so this is my uh, perfect camera angle i placed over here so camera angle is fixed so just render it so shortcut is shift q yes so now you can observe a very beautiful output right so it will take some time to render so uh, make sure you need to wait so you can observe the white the backdrop sky so then here you can observe the glass we placed a glass right yes exactly so here you can observe the glass again the side elevation you can able to find so it will take some time because the quality is 1600 into 2000 so if you give a lesser quality or a lesser size it will render faster and it will render quicker so once you rendered so once the render is done then only you can able to identify so whether whatever designs you did is proper or not a very beautiful stones you can see very beautiful glass shades also you can see over here the blue a glass shade the blue glass we added you can observe the blue glass yes so still i want to make some changes that's why i'm cancelling the render press escape to cancel the uh, render so then go back to perspective so turn off safe frame i need to place a floor currently i don't have a floor i need to place a floor i'm using a plane so just draw a plane so how much big uh, it's up to your requirement you can use so check in camera view how much you can able to find okay so this much is uh, more than enough for me so go back to perspective turn off safe frame yes so this much is uh, more than enough for me so instead of showcasing a empty floor or empty thing so we'll add a grass right we'll add a grass so go back to material press m so use a empty thing so click on standard that is diffuse bitmap so find the grass so already i have a lot more things so that's why i'm directly going for uh, the textures elevations so you will get lot more beautiful things okay so just you need to uh, download uh, whatever the required items here you can observe grass just open it so opened so select the floor or a base apply turn on this if you can't able to see your textures in viewport make sure you need to turn on show shaded materials in viewport 
So now you can observe the texture. But it is stretched, right? So yesterday we added one beautiful modifier called Map Scaler for uh, tails. That is cladding. Uh, sorry, cladding stones. So add Map Scaler. You can observe now this fits properly. So sun is there. So yes, so sun giving a beautiful uh, light settings. If you need a more brightness, increase the brightness of the sun. So then, exactly in front of uh, building, I want to place some uh, road. So take a copy. So I don't want map scaler. Right click and delete. So go back to material. So use a new material. So diffuse bitmap. So already I have a road texture also here you can observe open it so then apply show yes so now you can observe the road texture is in different angle so what you need to do now instead of map scaler so map scaler will not work for this you need to add a UV W map so UV map so UV map also uh, we discussed when we are placing a texture for gates so UV map so open the UV map, select a gizmo, rotate it, I need in this direction, so rotate it for a 90 degree, so then I don't want this much big road actually, so the width is too big, so this much is more than enough, so just place the road, yes. So a little more smaller size I need, select a gizmo, a rescale it, so like this, the repetitions of the textures. So now go back to camera, turn on save frame, shortcut is shift F, so press render, shift Q. So now this looks more uh, decent, see, our floor is there, our road is there, yes. So one by one, one by one we need to add everything, so to get a beautiful output. So little more uh, wide angle I need that is a little more uh, zoom out angle I want to place. So select your camera in the top view, move little more back side. So left hand side, right hand side it's up to you. You have an option to move. See. So little more corner angle I want to place. That's why I'm moving. So because I want to showcase uh, side elevation also. You can use. Yes. So now I can able to identify the side elevation also in the same way I can able to identify this front elevation also. It's up to you guys. So how you want to place, you have an option to place. So where you want to place also you have an option. So just you need to focus how to use the things. Yes. So now front elevation is there, uh, side elevation also is there. So everything looks proper. So it's up to you. If you are not happy with these things, you can fix it for uh, the previous direction. Just use the middle mouse to pan. So how much angle you want to change in the top view, uh, you can move your cameras. So little more front, little more back, up, down. So very minute things you can use and you can alter with the help of these things. So just this looks uh, good more than enough. Now press Shift Q. It's a render. Yeah. So now this looks more beautiful. Now this looks more uh, attractive and decent. Yes. So sunlight proper. In case if you need a evening scene, so what you need to do? A very simple. So move your sun completely to the bottom, like off. So render it. You can observe now this looks a sunset kind of thing it's a evening thing so automatically you can observe the orange tone in your lighting because a sunset uh, tone you will get just you need to decrease uh, the height or the scale of the sun that means previously i placed exactly top on the house so now i'm moving little more down so still if you want to more dull so move your sun below the ground level or exactly to the ground level so you will get little more darkness see so more darker you will get so completely dull or completely dark you need so move completely to the bottom below the ground level again so now 
you can able to identify complete dark so in this case you need to add more lights so we have a different different types of lights you need to add a more lights in this case yes how to add more light so let's find so the first thing we'll take a day scene output and we'll see and the second thing we'll take a night scene for night scene or evening scene we need to add more light so because of course in our natural also uh, after evening in the night scene or in the dark scene we used to add lights right artificial lights in the same way we need to add so let's take one day scene output in the beginning stage so move your sun completely to the up so render it yes now this looks more pretty and this looks more decent by default you will get the shades you will get the shadows and all so because our sun is a natural source of light automatically it will give you shades shadows a uh, light intensity and all so just wait for a few more minutes i uh, will get a proper render output so later you can save this so this render time completely depends on the kind of quality render you are taking and the kind of laptop or systems you are using so if you have a good configure system you will get a very quick render depends on the setting so now currently you can observe my uh, render setting size is 1600 into 2000 height and width so height is 2000 width is 1600 so you can use a uh, different different sizes you can play with a different different kind of things and all so let's uh, wait for a few more minutes it will give you a proper output then i will show you how to save your things so now you can observe oh, wherever you can see this kind of lights so this is your final output wherever you can see dark so that is still in a rendering process so each and individual time a render is must and should to take a beautiful outputs your complete elevation lightings the beautiness depends on this final render things So just uh, you need to be patient. So you need to be more concentrate on which part looks more highlights. So which parts looks more dim and all. So because currently we are working with a day scene light. So day scene light. If you had only one light, that is more than enough. This looks more decent. This looks more pretty. So we created our complete uh, light setting only with the use of sunlight. so a natural source a natural sunlight so here you can observe you can see the shadows so because i placed the sun in opposite direction so like in this corner so you will get a shadow in opposite direction only as a natural shadow so different different types of designs you will get different different types of color combinations you can use but this all the basic things this all the standard things you need to follow whatever design you do in future so basic render settings a uh, light settings a uh, sunlight materials how to add textures how to import a uh, cad plan and all we discussed a few more uh, sessions yes so now your complete render is done so just the major thing is i need to save so in the top you have a save option save so where you want to save you can uh, so this one i call it as a uh, day scene so i don't want to place this sky i want to place some trees i want to place some sky beautiful sky birds and all in the background so that's why what i will do instead of saving saving in a jpeg i used to save in a png so png means you will get a transparent background you will you can't able to place anything if you are taking in a jpeg format so that's why i prefer png use png and save so apply okay so png means you will not able to find this backdrop 
so like sky so just you need to place the backdrop in compositing the later editing part so we'll discuss that okay so once it is done how yes so that's it so now right click open with adobe photoshop adobe photoshop is a software where we are doing composition so you can add a trees you can add a birds you can do some small color changes and all so make sure so after doing all the elevations you need to play with editing softwares so currently uh, remember we are working with a day scene so day scene what kind of sky you need to match so now you can observe the background is empty so what i need i need to play with the brightness go for image in the top adjustment brightness and control just i'm clicking on auto so auto will give you a very decent output so if you are happy with the auto leave auto otherwise go with the manual settings manual brightness yes so here you can observe it's removed a minus 8 brightness and it increased the 13 percent contrast if you're happy apply okay otherwise you can cancel it so then background sky i need what kind of things i need so file place embed so just find so you need to find a sky so already i have a sky so so what kind of sky so here you can observe i have a trees i'm placing a trees so background place it so you can observe this one also transparent in google you will get everything transparent images so just you need to place and just you need to match it so increase the size so move the layer to the bottom like this so this looks uh, more decent yes so backdrop also placed in the far distance you can observe so one more copy i need a right click on the layer duplicate layer or press ctrl j so flip it ctrl d tree free transform horizontal so i need a tree i want to place a tree like this you can place a tree then apply okay yes so this looks more decent so this looks uh, more, more beautiful you can please it's up to you how you are placing what kind of images you are placing so then i want to place a sky so file again place embed so find a sky here you can observe i have a sky so click place it so please and scale it so you can place any kind of sky move the layer completely to the bottom yes so then zoom out so now you can observe this looks more decent this looks more natural yes in the front area i want to place some bushes so flower bushes or plant bushes and all file place embed so i have uh, few things also so where yes so here place it so decrease the size so place it in a proper way so zoom in so because you need to place in a attractive way so according to camera angle you need to match the things otherwise it won't look good so one over here so take a copy and i want to place the same thing in opposite direction up to this so if you want to place here i uh, have a option you can place wherever you need you can place so now this looks more decent this looks more beautiful the day scene elevation is ready so use photoshop to composite uh, to add uh, different different things like trees plants and all so instead of creating or placing everything in a 3d so normally people uh, they use photoshop and they prefer photoshop to place this kind of things hope the session was informative we'll catch up in next session Everyone. 
This is Ashrit from Learn Digital Academy. So last session uh, we discussed on a daylight settings, how to uh, composite your scene with the help of Photoshop and all. In this session we will discuss on different type of light setting. So evening, evening light setup or night light setup. So already uh, we have a sun. So last time also uh, I mentioned if you move the sun towards down you will get a dark uh, lighting. So, so just move the sun towards down. I need a complete evening or night kind of setting. So just move wherever you need. Go back to camera angle and render it and check. Uh, it's not completely night. So what I will do. So move your sun completely down. So just uh, make it your scene complete and dark. So now only little amount of uh, backdrop uh, you can able to identify. So now what you need to do, you need to play with uh, more lights. So we have a different different types of lights actually. So where you will find, so yeah, this looks more decent. So I want to place a different types of lights. So where for focusing the front angle, I need to place one light. For focusing the side angle, I need to place one light. So then uh, in front of doors, I want to place one light. Above, above the house, like aerial view, uh, moonlight, I need to place a light. So we, so we have a light called plain light. So here you can observe V-ray plain light. So use that. So just draw, for example, the first part I want to draw is front angle. So here you can observe the light. So the rectangular light, this indicates the direction of light fall. Okay. So after drawing, Go for modifier. In the modifier, you need to switch a uh, uh, few options. So go for uh, rectangle uh, options. So cast shadows. Yes, we need a shadows. Double sided. Light should eliminate both the side, right? So that's why you need to turn on double sided. So then the light, this one we call it as a light area, the box. I don't want to showcase that a light area in my render. That's why what you need to do, you need to turn off. Uh, by default it is turned off, you need to turn on invisible, turn on invisible. So then in the top only you have an option light multiplier that is intensity and color, what kind of light color you need. So go back to camera and save frame, render it. So now you can observe a small amount of light in the front area. I want to increase the light intensity, select the light. So instead of 30, so I am going to place 100, so then render. So just check, yes, now you can see a little more bright. So where you want to place, you have an option, you can place. So one light is done. So what I will do, I need the same light in other direction also. So take a copy, so rotation is minus 90 degree. So other angle is our camera angle, right, the side view. So place your light for the side view also. So you can move the light a little more front, it will give you more brighter. So yes, this looks more decent. So camera render. So now you can observe, it looks more brighter. So once you added a light. So I don't want this much big lights. Go back to perspective. So decrease the size this much. So it's up to you how much big light you are placing, in which distance you are placing your light. So this looks more decent for me. Yeah, so it's good. Camera, save frames and render. Yes, so now looks more uh, beautiful, looks more clear. So for this tones, I want to add a light. So like a spotlight kind of things or a uh, attractive light drops uh, you can able to identify in all exterior elevations in the evening scene right so how to add that what kind of light we call that as so that one we call it as IES light so if you google it you will get lot more IES light source files so just you need to download and you need to use that so I will show you how to use the IES lights go back to perspective turn off save frames so the first uh, you need to draw a IES light. So here you can observe 
Vire I E S or in the right hand side also you can observe Vire I E S. Select so where you want to place for the staircase near that cladding stones. Yes. So just click and drag it and release. So just move and place where you need. So this area I need I E S light. So this is the light suits and the bottom one is your light target. So you can observe, you can move. So go back to camera, uh, render it. So you can't able to identify anything because there is no light source at all. Just we added a IES light, but we not even added a IES light file. So you need to add a IES light file. Where you will find, so go back to modifiers. So in the right hand side, you have an option called IES file. So select, click on none. So check your local drives because already I have IES light files. Uh, I downloaded already. So I am going to use uh, IES light files. So we have a lot more uh, beautiful options. You need to utilize it. Wait, just a moment. Avire IES light preset. So which one you need? Currently, I have 30 types. So select any one and click open. So now render it and check. Still, you can't able to identify. We have an option of a selected area render. We call it as a region render. So here, click and select this. Now, if you click on render, only this part will render. So let's check. You can observe. No. So currently, no light source at all. So select the light. Increase the light intensity. So, currently it is 4800 is there. So, I am increasing to 44000. So, very small amount of uh, light you can see over here. So, I am increasing one more. Four. So, maybe sometime you will get uh, 4 lakhs, millions. So, you need to play with these things. Yes, now you can observe. So, little more. So, instead of 4, I am placing 8. So, more brightness, more intensity, you will get. See, it looks more decent, it looks more attractive. So, always you need to place uh, IES light files. So, now if you do not like this light, so select replace it. IES file, click on this. So, I have a different light source, for example, 20, open it and again render it and check. So now you can't able to find any light source because the intensity. So just increase the intensity in the right hand side down. So now it is in 825. Okay. So now what I will do? I will add 10 and a render. So still no light. So I will add one more thing, one more zero. So now you can see a very small amount, right? So depends on the kind of IES light you are using, you need to play with the intensity value. So each and individual times, it will give you a beautiful output. So you can observe now. Yes, looks good. So if you are not happy with that light, so go back, change it. So which light you need each and individual time, you can replace the light sources. So not an issue. So increase the intensity. See now this looks more brighter. So you can decrease one and you can increase the value. Yes. So this looks uh, decent for me. So increase more brighter. So one one digit if you are playing also, it will give you a very beautiful output. Stop. Cancel this one. So this is the region render. So then light we applied. So go back to perspective. So select the target with the light also. So where and all you want to place a light, you need to identify first. The first area in this part. Actually, I want to place a light in this area. 
okay so it's up to you uh, where you need to place you can place uh, there is no uh, limitations where you can able to identify this looks more beautiful you can place take a copy so now two lights i have placed so then again what i will do i used to take a copy of the same thing so i will place over here so completely bottom so then the same thing i will mirror so like upwards so currently uh, bottom words are there so now i want to place a uh, upward direction also so select the light in the top you have a mirror option click so which x z so which axis you need you need to find select only one first mirror it so z axis yes now the same thing z axis okay so now you can observe the lights so it will spread in bottom also it will spread in the top angle also go back to camera and render it and check so where and all light is falling yes so this looks more beautiful this looks more natural but we need to add a light source right maybe some bulb kind of things or maybe some a cylindrical pillar kind of things so some object we need to add add it so go back to perspective so in the shapes we have a cylinder so just draw one cylinder or a tube so i am drawing with the help of top view so just it is a dummy a source object so material so i prefer black only uh, previously also i added a black for railings i will use the same one so where is light this area we placed a light for the same area i am placing this this is the source So copy for both the sides. So the same you need to place in the top. So completely top also we need to place a light source, right? So wherever you are placing this kind of IAS lights, make sure you need to place the things. So camera. So now I will decrease the intensity of the main light. So hundred is there. I will turn to around seventy. The side light, hundred uh, is there. So that one I will turn to fifty. So both are different light. So now I render it. So each and individual places you can add uh, IES lights. So it will take a time uh, because how your render times now it depends on the number of lights you are using. So because day scene we added only one light that is sunlight. So now we added n number of lights. So six IES lights are there. Two a different source of light is there. One moonlight is there. So now you need to concentrate on each and individual. parts it will take a time to render of course yeah because we had a different different types of lights over here so both the scene will impact more day scene uh, give you a different output and the night scene will give you a different output so you can showcase your presentation in both uh, types you can only compare with the previous things previously it's rendered too quickly so now it is taking a time because he takes each and individual light parameters to render separately so make sure you need to place everything in a proper way proper direction proper materials 
So without adding materials, simply if you are adding a light and if you are taking a render, you will not able to get a proper output. So you need to play with each individual part of a material. So glass, railings, doors, windows, what kind of building color you need, what kind of frame color you need, what kind of outlook you need, everything you need to decide. So one design is more than enough. You can showcase with a different types of outlook. You can showcase with a different type of colors. You can showcase with a different type of uh, lightings or door. So this gives you a very beautiful and attractive outputs. So if you are doing a evening scene here, no need to do composition with the help of Photoshop because anyways, backdrops will be dark, right? So you can use as it is. So in case, still if you want to showcase some trees, uh, if you want to do some color corrections or some changes, obviously you can go back to Photoshop and you can do the changes. So once the render is done, so I will show you uh, how to play with the Photoshop also because that scene is dark. So we need to play how, what kind of sky you need to add, what kind of uh, trees you need to add how to play with a little more light, brightness, intensity and all will change in composition. So one thing uh, I need to mention, so number of time you practice, you will get a more beautiful and decent outputs. So if the scene is big, you need to spend a lot more time. If the scene is small, of course, uh, the same effort you need to place, but you will get a quick output because the area or the measurement is small. For this elevation only, you can design in multiple ways. You can think in multiple ways. Instead of uh, this window empty, the glass we placed for the balcony or uh, the staircase, right? You can showcase in a different design. Instead of this black cladding stones, you can add a different stone. So for this normal balcony railings, you can add a glass railings. So different, different types of thoughts or different, different types of ideas you will get. Or maybe you will get ideas by looking into some other designs. You can implement the same design or the same structure for your elevations if the plan is matching. For render only, uh, it will take a time. So sometime for one render, it will take hours together. You need to wait patience. So you need to wait a long time. So patience is the main thing. So when you're working with the 3D things. You can observe IES light, it looks more attractive, it looks more beautiful. So we have n number of light resources in the Google. So just you need to find and you need to download. So if you are using a different types of lights, this looks more attractive. So now zoom in and you can observe here I placed the light source. So now people can able to easily identify, okay, they placed the light resource over here. So that's why light is falling. So if you're not placing this kind of objects and if you are showcasing only light, it looks unnatural, it looks dummy. So try to place any piece. So maybe cylinder, maybe tube, maybe rectangle, maybe box. Whatever you feel, just place one object. So uh, light source you need to place. The same light you can add for compound walls. Your normal side elevation. If you are done with a beautiful side elevation also, uh, you can add this. So if it is a corner rose, you need to concentrate on two sides. So one is side and one is front. If it is a center rose, only you need to concentrate on front elevation because both the sides, maybe some buildings are there or maybe some other apartments if you have, no need to concentrate on side things. So just concentrate on front. So try to give a maximum beautiful elevation for the front only because front is the only view you can attract.
yes uh it's almost done so only few percent is left so once it is done so save it take it to photoshop and do some changes the changes means we can play with the brightness and contrast so we need to add a backdrops so for the doors here i placed a normal color if you want to place a door texture as we placed for gate right in the same way you can place a door textures for doors also so you can observe how much time it's taking for the render process so that is the only reason we add backdrops we add trees bushes plants and all uh, in photoshop so few people uh, they will add everything in a 3d uh, they will not take it to photoshop composition to add a backdrops or to add a trees plants and all so if you have a good system of course uh, you have a option you can place trees bushes plants cars whatever you want to showcase everything you can place in a 3d only so but uh, depends on the system depends on the requirement you need to place So if you don't like uh, the blue color glass, you can change the fog color. So when we are working with the materials, uh, I showed how to change the materials, how to add textures and all. So go for V-Ray material, play with the material colors, play with the reflection, refractions and all. So then you can able to identify a very beautiful tones. So your material will impact most on the thing. If you are showcasing everything only with the help of basic colors, it won't look good. So that's why uh, you need to add some stones, you need to add some marbles, granites, lights, these beautiful things to make a customer attractive. Yes. The render is ready. Uh, here you can observe the final output. So save. So previously we saved a day. So now I will save the night. Night. A same format I am saving that is PNG save okay yes it's done so it's saved so now uh, minimize your max thing so go back to photoshop so here you can observe night so right click or yeah so just drag and drop the similar thing in photoshop so what you need to do now you need to turn the back a main layer yes this is the night scene you can observe light for the night scene you need to decrease the brightness of the backdrops so image adjustment brightness and contour click auto according to your scene uh, it will match if it is not matching so use your brightness and contour manually cancel it it's not working so not an issue, uh, image, adjustment, exposure, I will decrease the exposure, you can observe a completely dull, because as it is a dark scene, right. Okay, the same thing for one more, image, adjustment, exposure. It's up to your requirement, you can showcase things. So then sky, of course, you need to change the for the night exposure, decrease the exposure. Yes, so this looks a completely a night or completely evening setup. So this one also, yes. So don't forget this one also, decrease the brightness a little bit. So anyways, in the front area, we have a light source. So that's why not an issue if you're not decreasing much. So, but try to decrease for the small amount, right? Okay. So then select the elevation, image, adjustment, brightness and contra, auto. It will gain little more lighting over here. So you need to wait. Yes. 
a little more brightness if you need you add apply okay yes so this looks more decent this looks more beautiful so try to spend a lot more time with the photoshop to place the backdrops to place the background trees foreground trees and all and to do small color corrections so we discussed on lights we discussed on render settings we discussed on daylighting and also we discussed on night lighting i hope the session was informative we'll catch up in next session